Hello, I'm JW. This time we've got some wire connectors to have a look at, and uh, here's an example of one of them. And uh, you may be thinking it's made by that company called Wago, but uh, these are not made by them, or in fact anything to do with them. These are direct from China, and are made of solid Chinesium. And we've also got some of these things, which again also direct from China, so uh, who knows how good or bad they might be. And they come in a variety of various shades and colours. We've got this one here, which has got this sort of various uh, three shades on there and all kinds of other weird things which we'll have a look at in a minute. Now I say these were imported directly from China. Do they work? Well uh, we'll have a look. Would I use these uh, in a proper installation? Well of course the answer is no because uh, even if these prove to be fairly nice and fine, the problem with importing stuff like this yourself is that you've got no idea what the quality is going to be like, even if you buy some which are okay. You might then buy some next week which turn out to be a load of old junk. And of course, uh, if you put these in somewhere and then they melt and still someone's house sets on fire, then of course you are the one to blame. So uh, not the kind of thing I'd recommend to use in any uh, real installation, but uh, we're going to have a look at these anyway, just to see what they're like and uh, maybe uh, destroy a few as well for a bit of fun later on. So this is what we've got, a fair selection of these things. And uh, say so these come in a variety of rather odd shapes. Uh, some of these are obviously copies from the uh, sort of official ones. But uh, these and uh, things like them most definitely are not, because um, on most of these, say like this style, it's just a question of three wires in here, and then all three are common together with the metal you can see underneath there. But uh, these style are somewhat more unusual in that it's only connected through from one side to the other. So in theory you could have, say, line neutral and earth on this side and line neutral and earth over there, which would basically just connect two uh, cables together. And similarly with the orange one we've got here. Not really sure why they've got these colours here, because we've got orange, yellow and blue. And uh, certainly in the UK, those were never standard colours. You could get red, yellow and blue at one time, but obviously orange isn't red and uh, those colours went out of use 15 odd years ago. These orange ones are the same, so you've basically got four here and four there, which are connected across, but not actually connected together. And these are black body for some uh, reason there. These ones here which are even more bizarre, we've got blue and red, which kind of might be blue and brown, but uh, not really. And then these things which are even worse, where we've got the black, blue and brown, but it's not brown, it's actually red. So uh, again, a bit of a strange choice and the black doesn't really fit uh, with anything either. And so we've got a variety of these. And then we've also got these things which are obviously intended to mount on a rail, so just clips on uh, to the rail there, and again it's single wire on the top, single wire at the bottom, so just connect the two together. Now these ones are the sort of lever variety, so you've got the levers here, and then you just place the wire into the terminal hole there, and then the lever presses down and it will secure that in place, and they do grip on uh, decently well, so I don't think there's any particular problem with that. The levers themselves are rather sort of gungy, and uh, when they're in this position they're not entirely sort of level there, they uh, you can sort of press them so they're level, but they do have a certain amount of uh, slop in them, so uh, quality is certainly not the best there, and they are surprisingly stiff in terms of opening, so they'll probably work, but uh, definitely not the sort of thing I would uh, personally use on a proper installation. Three-way ones here, again pretty much the same, although these seem to have an issue where the levers don't always stay in the up position. And again it's just three wires there, all of which common together on the metal there on the back. And again we put the wire into this one, again we'll find it uh, properly secures that there, so not any particular problem with those. And uh, say these uh, certainly have a nice snap to them, you can see they're just common through at the back and they do have the little hole on the back here, presumably for where you can put a test probe in there to check the voltage or whatever. So uh, again, fairly uh, reasonable looking, but so the problem is no uh, real knowing whether these are going to uh, melt, set on fire, or do who knows what. Now this style is certainly uh, something else entirely, because uh, unlike these, where they're all common together, and also the style of these where you just get the half, where they're all common together, these three are not common, it's basically one across two across and three across, so the idea being you could uh, take your wire, place that in the hole here, and again it grips on decently well, 
and then you can take another wire and then link across in that fashion so you've just got straight through. Now uh, this would appear to be a fairly limited used item because essentially all you're going to be able to do is connect say a three core cable line neutral and earth to another one line neutral and earth with nothing else because these are designed for a single wire only so although uh, they might appear very useful and handy at the outset there aren't really that many circumstances where you're just going to want to connect three individual wires to three other individual wires perhaps in a uh, light fitting or something maybe but uh, fairly limited use thing and then they've got these black ones with four which seems even worse because then you just got simply four going across there quite well they're black and not the other colors uh, it's really not known and uh, say so as for the other colors we've got here certainly is a strange selection of them but uh, essentially it'll go across like that now one possible problem here is that uh, inside of course there's going to be some kind of plastic separation but what sort of voltage separation have we got between the individual pieces because of course on this style it doesn't actually matter because they're all connected together all at the same voltage so it's just between the inner and then the uh, insulated outer but uh, these ones you put say line here and earth here you're going to have the 230 volts between it or if you use it on say a three-phase circuit there could be uh, obviously 400 volts between those so we'll do a little test here just to see what kind of voltage it will withstand between any two of these points now to start with we'll just do the test that we do normally on a uh, typical electrical installation so just connected two wires here so one in each of the terminals so blue and the uh, yellow in that case but shouldn't make any uh, real difference two wires here so just connect these to the uh, clips we've got here and we're going to use this uh, mega mft1741 and we're going to start at the voltage of 500 which is the normal voltage you'd use if you were say, testing a uh, 230 volt installation and we should see that the uh, resistance between this is pretty much as high as this thing goes so let's, uh, let's have a look yeah so there we go so uh, greater than 999 mega ohms and test voltage of 546 so that certainly is fine and uh, pretty much what you'd expect now this does go up to of course a thousand volts so uh, let's try that as well why not wouldn't normally use a thousand volts on that but uh, bearing in mind that uh, these should be entirely separate so it definitely uh, should cope with that Now, just a warning there because obviously a thousand volts is somewhat uh, dangerous if you put your fingers there but again it's greater than 999 1102 volts has been applied so no problem with that either and again that's pretty much what you'd expect however of course that's not really good enough because uh, let's see at what level these things would actually fail so what we can use is this device up on the shelf here which uh, i can't actually show in shot with this at the same time as the other but uh, i've seen it before and essentially this uh, can generate voltages of uh, somewhat more than that we've got a 1250 option and most interesting here we've got the 3000 option and also the 3750 option so turn that on there now this isn't the actual intended use for this machine but uh, it will do the job in this particular case so what we want to basically do is to connect uh, this uh, wire here which would normally connect it to the metal parts of the equipment and is actually connected through to the earth pin on the appliance there and uh, then we'll connect the other end to this and the other end happens to be this high voltage pro because obviously we don't want to be touching that with 3000 volts at the end of it and so though this is not normally how it's done it generally checks between the uh, pins in the plug and this it does actually work if you connect it to the uh, lead there as well so what we'll do then is to uh, turn this on and then just probe away at the uh, end of this now if this does trip it makes a rather horrible noise so we'll uh, cut down the volume of that obviously but uh, let's see what we've got so just check the uh, try the 3000 volt option to start with Now that's not actually uh, tripping the device, you can hear a bit of sparking there, that's basically due to capacitance between the two wires there. Let's uh, turn up to the uh, 3750. So again that hasn't actually tripped either, so uh, in that regard that is actually a pass. 
fun thing we can do is just to probe over the device itself and just see what kind of insulation we've got between the wire and the outer covering. I think for that we'll just connect both ends to the actual earth lead there. And again we use the 3750. Yep, and again that's fine, there's no uh, actual leakage there. Now let's try this uh, transparent one, again just got the wires between the uh, red and black there. So again we'll just probe there, we use the 3750 again because uh, why not. So that seems fine, and if we just go over the device itself yeah, not a problem with that. And now I've got this two-way one. This is just uh, orange and blue for whatever reason. And again, we'll try that 3750. So again, that's fine. So uh, they do seem to actually uh, Pass the uh, test there, even at that uh, rather high voltage. And just to demo what this sounds like when the uh, thing actually does fail, when there's obviously some kind of uh, conductive path through there, I'll just uh, tap it directly onto the wire. This does make a bit of a noise, so uh, headphone people might want to be uh, removing them. So there we go, what a uh, horrible sound. Now I did test uh, all of the versions we've got here in the various uh, sizes and styles and they all did pass at that uh, 3750 volts so there is decent uh, insulation between the various parts. You can see here the conductors just go straight through, obviously three of them on the uh, example we've got here. So in that regard they uh, do seem to work, although I say I'm not really sure what the actual use case for these would be other than just joining two completely separate cables together. And on the back of these they are actually marked L and N on some of these. This two-way one, for example, just has uh, L and N sort of pressed into the plastic there to sort of suggest the usage, the L being the blue one and the N being orange, so uh, not entirely sure what the uh, deal with that is. This is another example of the same one and it's the same way round. So line is blue apparently in whichever country they're supposed to be used in. Uh, this one here also marked L and N on the back, and L is blue and N is red in that case, so uh, hmm, there we go. This 301 is actually marked as well, so you've got L and N, so it's L and N and the middle is not marked, so use it for whatever you like. And then this black one isn't uh, actually marked with anything, it's got some uh, symbols here which are uh, certainly not uh, L or N. This one does tell us the ratings, apparently 32 amps, 250 volts or 600, and the size of wire 0.08 to uh, 4 millimetres squared. So uh, there you go. And this one, again, it's got uh, various markings on there, and it does have L and N printed. In this particular case, L is orange and N is blue, and then the yellow one is for whatever else you wish to use. Now let's take one apart and see what's got inside. So let's have a go at this black one. They appear to just clip together from two separate components, so uh, hopefully they will uh, unclip uh, relatively easily. So let's uh, just go in there and see if we can uh, pry it open. Now of course these things aren't designed to be opened once manufactured, but uh, nevertheless we can uh, get in there and uh, hoik those bits of plastic away. And uh, let's try this side also. Plastic on these seems to be a fairly soft material. There's certainly not a lot uh, of sort of any glass fibre reinforcement or anything else in there, but then of course, uh, would it generally need that anyway? So there we go then. So the top with the uh, coloured levers. Is just obviously one component, you see they just hinge in the thing there, so as you lift it it's pressing down on the piece below. And then the pieces below, here they are, so again it's just four individual contacts there, and then in the default state it's gripping onto the wire, and then that orange lever presses down when you raise that, 
which of course provides you a hole to insert the wire in from either end. So here's one of the contacts from inside and it's three pieces of metal. They're not actually welded or fixed together in any way other than the spring tension. So we've got a copper, or at least copper coloured bar at the bottom, and then the two uh, silver coloured uh, spring pieces which basically just grip around the wire there. So that's in the closed position and then the wire would actually go underneath the copper where that gap is just sort of opening up there. And then of course it pulls up and pinches the wire between the copper one and then the spring on the top. And again the other side obviously exactly the same just in reverse there. So it's got a fairly decent uh, sized piece of metal in the bottom there. So uh, there shouldn't be any problem with that. And say so in terms of the uh, spring action that is a very powerful spring there. It's very difficult to actually uh, press that with fingers so yeah that seemed to be uh, perfectly suitable. And for the actual plastic moulding you can see there are distinct channels for each of the four conductors or four contacts and it just uh, places down in there so there's no actual gap between them. There's not a huge amount of space between the top of the metal and the plastic there but again when the top is on that will all be held down in position by the uh, pieces here anyway so it's not as if they're going to sort of move once they're in as those bits there would secure it in place and of course that just goes over the top like that so there is a decent amount of uh, separation between them obviously it is just a uh, piece of plastic but generally uh, that's all you've got on most wires and cables anyhow but anyway, it's just the generally PVC insulation over the copper wires that are next to each other and so the contacts do just drop out in that particular thing with the lid off but I'll tell you, obviously it's got those pieces there to secure them in when it's actually fully assembled. Here's one of the transparent ones. These seem to be a different type of plastic. It's uh, somewhat more brittle. It's uh, more like polycarbonate or something along those lines. The other ones are more soft, so probably more like PVC or something. But uh, similar kind of construction there. have got the three components, although the bottom piece on these is the same shiny silver colour, so not uh, copper or copper coloured but uh, principle is exactly the same it's just the two springs one on each side and the solid bar underneath and then your wire would go underneath there when it's pressed and then it uh, obviously pulls up and grips onto it and again they just loosen the bottom got that same uh, division between the various compartments so uh, again there's not a problem with anything there and then the top piece is just over the levers in which when moved obviously press down onto the spring and open the hole there so again pretty much the same design but so more sort of uh, crunchy type of uh, polycarbonate type plastic. So there's a look at a few of these uh, Chinesium connectors and they're not actually terrible I mean they would probably do the job and uh, no doubt work as intended. So the big problem with these things is that if you're going to buy these in from China yourself if anything goes wrong with these and it causes someone's house to burn down then of course you are the person who's liable for that not the manufacturer in China, which is why I wouldn't recommend using these in an actual installation. Certainly you can easily get the proper ones because in the case of those if there's a problem with it and it proves to be the product at fault then the manufacturer of course is the one on the hook for that. And generally you would expect things from a reputable manufacturer to be consistent in their actual quality and whatever else. So say if you buy these from China they could be decent ones like these or the very next lot could be a total load of old rubbish because the factory decided to cheapen out on certain parts of them. So uh, certainly interesting items, but I would not recommend those for use unless it's just something you can use temporarily yourself or whatever else. So uh, that's it for this time. Until next time, thanks for watching.